people have carved communities into these formations for thousands of years. While many of these evocative caves are abandoned, many cave settlements have grown into thriving towns, whose main industry is clearly tourism. For extra guidance, we're joined by my friend and fellow tour guide, Lali Sermon Iran. For years, Lali's led our bus tour groups around Turkey, and for this itinerary, she's joining us. While mainly Muslim today, Anatolia was Christian for five centuries before Islam even arrived. Early Christians had to take shelter. They had to hide from the ancient Roman persecutions. They had to hide from the 7th century Arab invasions. And the landscape around here provided the perfect hideout. It really does. And to actually see what Lolly's talking about, we're descending into Kaimakli, a completely underground city dug out of the rock. Much of Kaimakli was originally dug in Hittite times, over a thousand years before Christ. Later, this underground world provided an almost ready-made refuge. Through the centuries, when invading armies passed through the area, entire communities lived down here for months at a stretch. In ancient times, Christians were persecuted and actually did go, literally, underground. This is a remarkable example of their determination to live free and true to their faith. Imagine 300 AD, hiding out down here with your family. In fact, hiding out down here with your entire community and people up there hunting you down. Tourists are free to explore the networks of streets and plazas. You'll find kitchens, cramped living spaces, massive roll away the stone doors, and ingenious ventilation shafts to bring fresh air to the many underground levels. They could have made these tunnels bigger, but that was part of the plan. It certainly made any invader vulnerable. And to conserve oxygen, candlelight was kept to a minimum. It must have been a long, dark wait. But for us, it's back to fresh air and sunshine. We're on our way again. As time went on, sprawling communities still digging caves for homes inhabited entire valleys like Zelva. Around the 10th century, Zelva was one of scores of similar cave communities here in Cappadocia. Cleverly, they wrung a livelihood out of this parched land. Caves served as ancient condominiums, with holes dug out as cooking pits. In addition to living spaces, they were also equipped with natural pantries, cubby holes carved out for storage of food and wine, big animal-powered stone wheels ground grain, people ingeniously used whatever nature offered them. Pigeon droppings were collected, providing valuable fertilizer to assure a good harvest in the valley below. The ancient home of the Ephesians is one of the world's greatest classical sites. The west coast of what we now call Turkey was once a cultural heartland of ancient Greece. Ephesus blossomed as a Greek city in about the 4th century BC. It was later consumed by the expanding Roman Empire and eventually became a major Roman city. While the site is vast, only about 15% of this Greco-Roman metropolis has been excavated. But as Rome fell, so did Ephesus. Once a thriving seaport, the city was sacked by barbarians. Eventually, its busy port silted up, and it was abandoned. A thousand years of silt left it stranded three miles inland from the Aegean coast. The library the third largest of the Roman Empire, is a highlight. The facade is striking. Statues of women celebrating the virtues of learning and wisdom inspired the citizenry. The city's main street is lined with buildings grand even in their ruined state. This one, known as Hadrian's Temple, was built in the second century. 
dedicated to Emperor Hadrian, its decorations are full of symbolism. To this day, archaeologists debate just what it all means. For extra guidance, we're joined by my friend Lolly Sermon Aran. For years, Lolly's led our bus tour groups around Turkey, and for this itinerary, she's joining us. Huge city, quarter of a million people. This was one of the biggest metropolises of the Roman period. Now we're in the downtown and the main street of the city, but the city expanded beyond this main street on both sides. So way up to the mountain, actually. On both directions, way up to the wow. mountains, and housed 250,000 people. All the city was plumbed. Right underneath us, there was a huge sewer, and there were clay pipes at either side of the street taking fresh water to the baths and the fountains. Wow, so they had aqueducts coming in and powering the whole city. Yes. See, these were the public toilets attached to the Roman baths next door. Everybody sat next to one another. So public toilets were really public. The terrace houses stretch up from the city's main drag. These excavations are incredibly complex, like piecing together an enormous puzzle. The fragments are so delicate, the ongoing work is protected under a roof. The terrace houses give us a particularly intimate look at Ephesian life 2,000 years ago. Now, how many families would, would have lived in this zone right here? Only five. Just five? Five families, and these were huge houses. This must have been the elite of Ephesus. Ultra, ultra rich. Not only for Ephesus, but among the riches of the world lived in these houses. So when you walk through here, can you imagine what it would be like to live at that time? Sort of. It was very luxurious living in these houses. All houses were arranged around an atrium, so they had a courtyard with rooms all around, which were richly decorated with art on two or three floors. A standard feature of any Roman city was its theater. To estimate an ancient city's population, Archaeologists multiply the capacity of its theater by 10. As this one holds 25,000, they figure the city's population was a quarter million. It was here that the Apostle Paul planned to give his talk instructing the Ephesians to stop worshiping man-made gods. And here in Ephesus, that god was Artemis. The local craftspeople produced statues of Artemis like this. It was a big industry. They exported them far and wide. When they realized Paul's message would ruin their businesses, they started a riot. Imagine this theater filled with thousands of people, all shouting in one angry voice, Great is Artemis of the Ephesians. For his own safety, Paul had to flee. And he ended up giving his message by letter. That's why in the Bible, we've got Paul's letter to the Ephesians. In what seems like the middle of nowhere, we come to a striking white hillside. This marks the ancient city, spa, and necropolis of Heropolis. In Roman times, the rich and frail came here to spend their last years and to die. We approach today as visitors always have, walking through the evocative tombs, then passing under an imposing Roman gate where a grand boulevard leads you to the mineral springs, famous since ancient times for its curative waters and tranquility. Today, the ever-popular springs in the shadow of ancient ruins fill a pool littered with a dreamy assortment of ancient Roman columns that sparkle beneath the crystal clear water. A soak here is like bathing in hot champagne. Below, the wondrous white cliffs of Pamukkale create a scenic backdrop for bathers. The water flowing over the rocks leaves a calcium residue that whitens and solidifies, creating a wonderland of pools and terraces that, along with the commanding view, make an unforgettable setting. Turkey fills the Anatolian Peninsula, and Anatolia is peppered with remnants of civilizations long gone. And around here, 
important sites are constantly being unearthed. Aphrodisius is a relatively recent excavation. The more they dig, the more many archaeologists believe that Anatolia, rather than Mesopotamia further to the east, is the cradle of our civilization. While this site goes back much further, what we see today is ancient Roman, only about 2,000 years old. This ornate gateway gives us a sense of the impressive city's former grandeur. And judging from its stadium, this town was really into sports. This is a proper stadium, one stadium long, that's about two football fields. Events like athletic contests, animal fights, and gladiator sports packed the house. <laughs> 